Hi everyone, Manuela Marchegiani from Isomer Skincare. Welcome to our channel, our channel where we talk about skincare, all things skin, formulation, the chemistry, the ages and, ch and stages of, of your skin, all the things that can happen. I'm a cosmetic chemist, a researcher and a scientist and a manufacturer, um, and I make skincare. And I've been doing this for over 35 years. I've experienced a lot of changes in my own skin a lot of challenges and concerns with my own skin. Um, so I'm hoping to share my experiences and my knowledge with you. Today, we're gonna to talk about skincare or anti-aging skincare in your 50s and a little bit beyond. So your 50s, skincare in your 50s, what is the best thing to think about? See what's happening to your skin in your 50s. This is what we consider postmenopausal or hormonal aging skin. So your body is changing a lot, your hormones have changed a lot, you have less estrogen, you have a lot of changes in the lipid content of the skin, and this is gonna manifest visibly on your skin. You're gonna have rougher skin, not just dry skin. Your skin will become rougher, more like sandpaper. Your skin will be thinner. It's going to be less elastic. So you're going to have, find your skin is thinner. You're gonna find that it could tend to crepiness. It's gonna to tend to sagging. Um, the volume will go down in your skin as well because you're going to lose a lot of adipose or fat in your skin. You'll notice that um, it's really interesting. Wrinkles may actually appear to be less visible or less wrinkling. You hear this a lot of times with people, especially older than 50, but they'll say, I don't have any wrinkles. I'm, you know, 70, I'm 60, whatever, and I don't have wrinkles. Well, this is because usually you end up uh, with such poor elasticity, your skin can't even wrinkle. So it's almost like it just becomes a blank sheet, right? So this, this, this melting effect occurs. So you'll notice that wrinkles, uh, it's, it's a little bit different for everybody depending on your, your skin thickness. You'll also notice that there could be some pigmentation issues here, either uh, white patches or a loss of pigmentation or heavy spotting. A darker pigmentation so it can vary either way and this is a factor of the hormonal changes you may also find acne comes back and again this is because of a dif dysfunction dysregulation of the hormones so your 50s is an interesting time um, 50s and beyond is an interesting time for your skin so going into what you're going to need in your in your 50s the key thing is to focus on moisture and retention okay you want moisture retention so if we're going to build upon what is a regular or good basic skincare routine you're gonna have cleansing moisturizing and then you're going to have sunscreen in your 50s and late 40s with the cleansing function usually you go for a good exfoliating cleanser but in your late 40s 50s as you get more temperamental in skin you may have to switch your your cleansing or use two different types of cleansing one is going to be more of an exfoliating cleansing a scrub cleansing the other is going to be more of a milky cleanser and this is because if your skin is temperamental it will flare up once in a while so have two kind of cleansing options that you can work with in your skin you're going to you be using a antioxidant for me, in the 50s, I really like glutathione. I think it gives you more bang for your buck for brightening, for elasticity, for helping to detoxify the skin, to help regulate that skin surface. I think it's a brilliant antioxidant. And I think that um, ours in particular also has a growth factor, which I think is super important for skin that's uh, 50 plus in that decade, because you want to increase the density of the skin. Remember, your skin is thinning. So what you wanna do is you wanna work on more lipid content. You wanna work on thickening up that skin as much as possible. You know, introducing things like the antioxidant of the glutathione or the glutathione, introducing collagen peptides to stimulate that collagen and to get that collagen nice and firm introducing retinoids or continuing on with your retinoids, low-dose retinoid with a niacinamide and an azelaic acid would be fantastic for nighttime use. The other is when you're thinking about the key elements for skin that's in its 50s, right? And we talked about that hydration. So what are you going to bring in? You're going to bring in hyaluronic acid, 
you're going to bring in ceramides, you're going to also want to bring in, and I really think is important in the 50s, is probiotics, right? And this is really helping with that, the microbiome of the skin. I find that the prickliness of the 50s and beyond, that element that happens to the skin at that time requires real special attention in your, your, your skin microbiome, in the environment of your skin. So the probiotics or something like the triactive microbiome, having a prebiotic, a postbiotic and a probiotic, helping to create this really nice environment for your skin so it's not so reactive, it's not so prickly, it's not so temperamental. If you can't do that, one thing would definitely be to increase your ceramides for your skin and the other would be to for me is to have more ingredients that are what i like to call extremophile ingredients these are ingredients that will boost the barrier function retain sustain and accumulate moisture and act a little bit more like a climate control or an osmotic regulator a moisture monitor for your skin that's a little bit more aggressive than just a hyaluronic acid this is super important for skin in your 50s, right? Because you've got a lot of deficiencies, literally, in your body. It's changed that much. So we're on that tail end, if you will, of the reproductive cycle. So our bodies are kind of just like giving up a lot of the good fats. They're giving a lot of the good protection. A lot of the things that we really need to create a stronger skin, skin and a better looking skin. So supplementing that with a good skincare routine. So two types of cleansing, keep that in mind. How you're going to moisturize, of course you're gonna do cell turnover as we said, but how you're also going to moisturize, bring in the ceramides and the hyaluronate, try to bring in a pre or probiotic with a, like a tract of microbiome, and then try to use an extremophile technology like a Desert Youth or Forever Youth or the Antarcticine. These are really great ingredients that help regulate moisture without being heavy and gooey and sticky. If you do need a heavier shea buttery type of moisturizer or a barrier by all means, but I'm a big believer in having ingredients that are a little bit more on the lightweight side, but actually stimulate that functionality within the skin because I just think that long term, you don't want lazy skin. You don't want skin that always needs to be supported in a drastic way. I want skin that's active. I want skin that's going to interact and really be able to bounce back and respond to the skincare routine. I hope you enjoyed uh, our conversation about skincare in your 50s. It's a really great thing to look forward to, especially when you have the information.